膝枕だとこ,こんなお誘いを断れるわけないだろうが<笑>いかがでしょうか悪くないなくすぐったいやら心地いいやら Dang. So this episode of Arch Demon Dilemma, uh, my dog's just sneezing over here. Uh, this episode of Arch Demon's Dilemma uh, was a pretty emotional episode, and not the whole thing. I think the the whole episode in itself was cute, cool, and then emotional. Cute was very much uh, Zagun teaching Nephi how to be a sorcerer, kind of them going through training. Her, uh, you know, making a making a bean into a beanstalk, you know, her kind of like over extenuating everything. Like, I think all of that was absolutely adorable. And I love the time they spent together. Also, Zagan using Nephi because she made him as her as as his lap pillow and them sharing a tender moment and stuff was a really, really cute thing as well, too. I think all of that was adorable and was cute. I love the little moments that they shared with each other. I even love when Nephi called Zagan out for being friends with the purple haired dude. And she was like, oh, did you enjoy uh, Did you enjoy your time with your friend? And he's like, that freaking guy? That freaking guy? We're not friends. And he's like, shit, are we friends? He's like, do I enjoy my time with him? I don't even know. I, I loved all of that. Uh, then we go into the cool portion and the cool portion of the episode that I would say is definitely Zagan becoming an archdemon and finding out that he's extremely young for an archdemon and finding out kind of how he became that way of, and we already saw that he, you know, uh, killed his, his former master or whatever. Uh, but we did, what well, we didn't find out what the missing link or the missing piece was the how behind it. And we found out that as a kid, he was able to decipher kind of like the sorcerer's uh, depictions or whatever they're called. He was able to quickly decipher it and like turn it around on on uh, his master sorcerer, which the other sorcerers kind of fear. They fear his potential. They don't necessarily fear him of being able to do that same thing to more powerful wizards or sorcerers over and over again. So it's kind of one of the things like, you know, uh, uh, my my enemy's friend is my or my enemy's my friend or whatever, I'll, you know, stupid ass saying that they have uh, that it's better for them to get him on their side so that he's not a threat to them come later. But instead, he's kind of on their team uh, and he can learn from them, among other things. Uh, a monk can becoming a archdemon. His deal was, OK, if I can if I can have all of Marcosius stuff, which is the the dude that died that he attended the auction for. He's like, if I can get all of this dude's stuff, I'll become an archdemon. So they say, yeah, sure, no problem. Take all his shit. He does that. He goes back, and in his possession, we're going to pretend the spoon's a key. He goes, here's this, ta -ta -ta -ta, and he unlocks Nephi. He's like, go and get out of here, girl. Get. Uh, which, obviously, that's where the emotional part comes in. And the emotions is we know, I know, I know, you know, we know that the reason that he did it that way is he's looking out for her. He's not thinking of the repercussions are down the line, but he's looking out for her in the moment. He's like, I don't want her to be a slave to me. I don't want her to feel enslaved. I want her to choose whenever, however, whatever she wants to do, I want her to choose it. But he's not realizing that she may choose him. He's not realizing that outside of him, she has nothing. She has no semblance of existence. He knows the pain and struggles that she went through. She doesn't have money. She doesn't have skills. You know what I mean? Like she, it's not like she lived, got taken as a slave, and then, you know, it's like she's really not had that life experience. So uh, he didn't really give her the opportunity to see, like, okay, Take time to think about what you want to do next. Uh, you don't belong to me anymore. You're free to choose what you want to do. And if that involves leaving, that's okay. Instead, he did the, he did the, uh, you know, uh, it's better if I let the animal go in the forest that belongs in the forest than it is me keeping it at home. But the animal might want to stay at the house. It might, might want to stay at the crib eating good, you know? So that's where he effed up, and that's where the emotion came in, especially for Nephi. She's like, 
you know, having some PTSD stuff over there. She didn't even realize. She's like, what the hell am I doing on the streets? Like, what? I was making dinner, <laughs> you know? So now we have to see on, okay, how is she going to find her way back to him? Or how is he going to find his way back to her? Or is it going to be one of these where, we're like, they both know that they effed up and they go run towards each other? Like, we don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, my guess, if I had to put my anime thinking cap on, my guess is something will happen. Like, he'll continue, like, watching over her. Stalkery kind of thing. And then something's going to happen. Like, some threat to her life is going to happen. Uh, and he'll come in and save her. And that'll kickstart. That's my guess. You know, that's typical anime stuff. But who knows what will actually end up happening. But overall, episode four, super solid. Uh, I just don't like that they're getting so close. And then it got all backpedaled by him unlocking her or whatever. So anyways, uh, great episode. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. I'll see you next week for our episode five review. And uh, have a great rest of your day, week, weekend, all that stuff. All right, my friends. Peace.